Hi and konnichiwa to all my Japanese friends watching this video right now. Today I talk about the five first things you should buy as a photography beginner. My name is Benjamin Jaworski, photographer and adventurer. Ten years ago I started to teach myself photography. Today I travel the world as a professional photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, mistakes and tips and join me on my photography adventures. I get gear requests like every day on my Facebook page. Check it out, link is in the, the description below. And as well on email and other stuff. What things should I buy as a beginner? When I started to photograph 10 years ago, it was not so much about gear, it was more about photographing. But I think gear is a pretty important aspect for a lot of people. So that's why I made this video. The first important thing, I would say the almost most important thing um, which makes a huge difference in photography um, is a lens. And I would definitely recommend a very open aperture prime lens. What I always recommended on my German channel was the 50mm 1.8 by Canon. It costs something around 100 euro. Um, it's a 1.8 lens, 50mm and it's a great uh, quality cheap lens. Um, but now there's even even cheaper on the market, it looks totally the same, the Yongnu 55mm or 50mm lens, uh, 1.8 and it costs something around uh, 50 euros, so <laughs> even half the price. The great thing about such a prime lens is that you have a nice bokeh, a nice blurry background and that's what most of the people want and when you start photographing with a prime lens, can't zoom anymore and have the very open aperture, um, it will change your photography game. The second thing I would buy as a photography beginner is definitely a second battery and a fast SD card. Because in a lot of situations when you photograph raw or you want to make a nice burst sequence in your camera, you need a faster SD card and as well memory space is good when you go on a trip or on vacation. You don't want to change SD cards all the time and just take some more gigabyte and they are pretty inexpensive nowadays. A uh, second battery, especially for Sony owners, a very good thing even a third battery maybe depending on how much you shoot or if you want to shoot video as well then you might need a second or third battery all the time. Um, yeah, but that's a second thing I would definitely recommend and you don't need to buy the original batteries. There are good third-party um, battery brands out on the market for half the price and they do the same job and give your uh, camera the right power. The next thing I would recommend is a tripod. Because a tripod you can use in a lot of situations. I do landscape photography a lot in the year and I use almost every time a tripod because I like to do long exposure shots. But when you want to photograph at night, for example, a tripod is a good thing. When you want to do macro shots, a tripod is a good thing. When you want to do filmmaking, a tripod is a good thing. When you want to make yeah, architectural shots with long exposure or anything, a tripod is a good thing. So you see in a lot of situations, even in portrait photography or commercial photography, a lot of people use very heavy, very big tripods. So a tripod is always a good thing. You have then to decide if you want to carry it around all the time, if you need a big or a small tripod. I like a bigger tripod and um, yeah, that's what I use many times when I photograph landscapes and it was definitely a thing I bought as a photography beginner. Number four would be a backpack or a cold bag or just yeah any bag where you can put your camera into. Cameras are pretty expensive and lenses and all the stuff. It's a very valuable thing so you want to keep it safe and dust free and rain free. So I would definitely recommend to get a nice backpack um, when you want to go on a hike or something that is very comfortable, not too heavy but has enough space for your gear and maybe something else as well. I have many different backpacks and I used many different backpacks in the last 10 years. Um, I had one Extreme Plus, which was not that expensive. I had this Burton backpack, which is more casual, but has not that much space, but is pretty comfortable. I now have 
this Evox backpack here, which is pretty bag, not too cheap, but the best backpack I used so far, especially for my kind of photography, when I need a lot of gear, even laptop inside, and have to walk longer distances, it's not uncomfortable, and that's a very important thing with the backpack for me now. And another thing I use, as mentioned already, is a cold bag. This one you can't buy anymore, um, they don't produce it anymore, but I use it all the time for the camera, so I have the cold bag uh, in front of me, I can always access the camera, but when it rains it's very secure inside and I still have the other stuff in the backpack then, that's my kind of photography carry around thing. And the last thing! is this one here. <laughs> it's a DVD, but it's just a placeholder for like every image editing software out on the market. Um, I prefer Lightroom Photoshop, but I used Affinity Photo as well. And it's not too bad. Um, there are other free options. Lightroom Mobile, for example, is free on your cell phone. But image editing, when you start photography, is a great combination. Because I always say, when you know how to edit the images, how to get the best out of your images, it's not about manipulation or something. Something. It's about enhancing the already great image and when you know how to edit you know how to photograph the other way around or how to photograph different to edit it better to enhance it even more um, so a good yeah image editing software no matter a free or um, a paid version is always a good thing for a photography beginner to learn to understand and to use those were the five first things I would recommend a photography beginner to buy or to get uh, you don't have to but uh, it was almost the same order then I would suggest it so first prime lens or another lens uh, with that you can just play around and then the other stuff of course I did not mention the camera itself because you need a camera to be a photography beginner I hope you understand what I mean I hope you like the video hit thumbs up share the video with a friend of you maybe a photography beginner friend that you have and subscribe to the channel we're growing straight to the 100,000 subscriber on this channel which is very awesome I love all of you and I say sayonara total power to all my Japanese friends watching this video right now and if you want a shout out for your country just write me in the comments below what hello and goodbye means in your language. See you next time.